Hey everyone, and welcome to this month's portrait of what moves her. I'm so excited for today's session. You know, 2020 has been um, a roller coaster to say the least. And I've been so unbelievably impressed with the pivots I have seen in our industry, in, in our ability to be agile, probably more agile than we ever thought possible. And it's just proven that when we lean into change, when we lean into opportunity, amazing things can happen. We've made it through, almost through, uh, but, but very much so through a, uh, a world event that none of us could have seen coming. We've continued to serve our clients, our customers in ways that we never thought possible before. And I've been so proud and so impressed to see how people have, have sort of regrounded themselves, regrouped and refocused on their business and on the needs of their clients. And it's afforded us the ability to really take advantage of an extremely re robust market, but in a way that maybe we've never had to do before. And some of us are probably wondering, what am I gonna do next year? How do I plan for this? How do you plan for the unexpected? And how do you continue to be successful in the face of a changing market, a pandemic, homeschooling, all of these things that may happen, that may continue, that may not. For me, I believe a lot of that occurs because we stay very grounded and focused on what our finish line is. What do our goals look like? What are our personal goals? What do we want to achieve? in any given year. And we don't change the end zone. We don't change where we're running to, but perhaps we change the path that we're taking to get there. Now, for some of us, those have been dramatic changes. For others, maybe not so much, but the ability and the willingness to lean in has provided tremendous opportunity of growth for a number of you that are listening today. And maybe some of you that are saying, wow, what can I do? How can I set myself up to make 2021 the best year yet? Well, I am thrilled to have joining me today the president of Coldwell Banker Realty New England, Pauline Bennett. So let me welcome Pauline. Hey, Pauline. Hi, Sue. How's it going? Thanks for having me. It's Thank going you great. for being here. Going great. Excellent. It's funny to say New England. Maybe we're used to New England now for you because you were previously, for those who don't know, president of the Carolinas. Yes. Yeah. So, so Pauline is buying, you know, snow boots and uh, shifting her, her wardrobe uh, from the south to the northeast for sure, right? Well, dusting it off. So as many people, you know, I started my career in Connecticut. So it's, uh, it's really just kind of dusting off and coming home. I love that. I love that. Dusting it off. I, I prefer dust to remain on my snow boots, but we will see living in Jersey. So Pauline, that brings up an excellent point. You know, many of us know you so well and you've had really a phenomenal career. And so much of what we've talked about on this series throughout this series has been about taking control of your career, about you know, maybe taking risks or taking it to the next step. And you've really had an amazing pathway to where you are. So can you just share a little bit with everyone who's listening what your path to this this tremendous role has been for you? Well, you're, you know, thank you for the kind words. Um, and I do want to just acknowledge what a great series this is. Um, you know, it's funny, uh, you know, you'll hear that um, you know, I had a lot of help along the way, I had a lot of, I was really, I've been very blessed to have great people in my life, in my career um, that were, you know, role models, mentors, uh, willing to, you know, lend a hand and encourage me. And um, I really, this uh, series is such a great way uh, to encourage others to do the same thing and also to be able to give back. So. You know, I have, I have, I've been very blessed. You know, I had, um, I have uh, a family of women. Uh, so my mom and two very strong sisters who, you know, who I've admired over the years. And then, 
in my career, I had two, really three mentors really in my career, but two women mentors. And certainly, um, you know, the biggest mentor in my life has been in real estate as and many people know, Kate Rossi's been, you know, a great uh, mentor to me. And, you know, I started my career in real estate you know, as an agent, like everybody else, or like most people. And, you know, I got into real estate because I thought, you know, I had that entrepreneurial itch. I wanted to be my own boss. I wanted to do something that uh, involved people where I could be of service. And, and it turned out that the career that, you know, the real estate career, the real estate space has tons of runway. You can, mm -hmm. you can really grow your career in a variety of different ways. And I like to say that, you know, I, I, I just said yes along the way. And certainly um, there were very strong uh, figures in my, in my life that I, that I, you know, I kind of watched them and what they did and they inspired me. And so I, I just tried to surround myself with people who inspired me and I said yes along the way. I love that. And certainly Kate Rossi has been such an amazing influence on our industry, certainly on Coldwell Banker Realty and, and a number of the women and men that are part of our organization without question. And so a true tra trailblazer who also started as an agent and raised, you know, rose up through the ranks to, you know, executive vice president of Coldwell Banker Realty. And I love that pathway. I love that that sort of proof point on the fact that if, if you work hard and you say yes to opportunity, that it's there for you and it's there. Um, and there's a lot of people that are willing to help you along the way. You put in the work, but they're willing to help along the way. Absolutely. I also, you know, I, I was willing to kind of take some risk, I think, along the way. You know, I uh, sometimes, um, especially, you know, 20 years ago, you know, in my, when I was getting started out, I found that I used to ask questions later you know, I was kind of the, I was always willing to, to dive in head first and um, get outside of my comfort zone. And really, um, I think that, you know, in my, in my heart, I'm a little bit of a, you know, an adventure or adrenaline junkie. Um, and so that, that willingness to take a risk, you know, um, I think helped me along the way. And I'll, people do ask me that question, you know, how did, how did your career, how did your path, you know, lead the way and, and so quickly. And, you know, I was, I was, I had the fortune of being able to, uh, take some risk and run with that. That's um, it is it's a common theme, I think, in in success is that willingness to take a risk because there is not there's no guarantee. You know, the only guarantee is you're not going to move ahead if you stand still. And so yeah. oftentimes it's that leap of faith. And, you know, I often when talking with people, try and encourage them of, of the importance of the lessons learned from the leap. Right. Whether whether it's successful or not. What did you learn? What did you learn about yourself? And how do you apply that to your future endeavors? So, you know, when you think about, I'm gonna put you a little bit on the spot here, but you're now and, and have been for quite a long time, whether, whether you realize it or not, in a very similar position. You have a lot of women who are looking up to you, a lot of men, you are, you are encouraging people to, you know, do more, be more, take some of those risks. What, what do you think about when, when guiding maybe somebody new to the industry, right? What is your counsel to them um, to set themselves up for success? Sure. So a couple things come to mind with that. You know, the first thing is, you know, to invest in yourself. So whether it's, you know, um, whether it's taking an additional course to build your confidence, whether it's um, getting a coach, if that's something that would be uh, advantageous for you. You know, I was thinking back on it when I, when I, when I moved from Connecticut to Florida, you know, lots of our agents have coaches, but I think back when I was a, a newer manager, I hired a coach for myself, like outside mm. of the company. I didn't even tell my boss I was doing it. 
um, because I, you know, I just want I, I just wanted to do it for myself. But so invest in yourself, whatever that might look like for you, wherever you feel like that um, will help build your confidence and help you be successful. So that stands um, out to mind. You know, my mother, uh, my mother used to tell me very early on, and I have an amazing mother who I, um, some um, many people don't know, but I'm a first generation American. My mom came to this country when she was 30 and kind of the quintessential, you know, like five dollars and like go find a relative to live with kind of thing. But my mother had this saying that was show me your company and I'll tell you who you are. And it mm. took me. It took me many years to really understand what that meant. But the advice that I would give to people is surround yourself with people who encourage you to be your best. Um, it's easy to surround yourself with people where you appear your best or, you know, where maybe you are, you know, where, where you're not as elevated. Um, but I mentioned my two sisters, they were both very smart, very successful. And, and I, you know, I always wanted to be like them. And as I grew in my career, you know, I always surrounded myself with people who, uh, you know, who I was stretching to be like, it's kind of like that sports analogy that people will give, like if you're playing tennis or golf with somebody who's better than you, it will up your game. Um, so that's the second piece of advice that I would give to people surround yourself with people who, uh, you know, who call out the best in you. I, amazing, both amazing pieces of advice. And um, I think, you know, always surrounding somebody that forces you to raise the bar, that encourages you to try harder, that's going to call out some of your your excuses or, you know, whatever, but through a, through a, a way to force you and push you to do better, to be more. I think that's what you know, makes greatness, you know, um, don't settle and, and surround yourself. I love that, that advice from your mother. Don't that's, settle. A, don't that settle. Is, that's another, that's another you know, great I use that line all of the time. Um, it's really, um, it's great. And then, you know, look, I think that, you know, the people and I'll, you know, I'm just, uh, you know, a shout out to Kate, the people who have pushed me beyond my comfort zone, you know, those are the, those, those are really the, you know, if I was going to, um, that ability to, 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 help somebody reach their full potential um, that comes from surrounding yourself with people who are great people who are great and people who are comfortable and willing to look for that in their in their teammates in their employees in their colleagues that say wow this person could do more they can they can i see greatness in them and you know i hear kate actually often say that about people and and she does you have this desire to be more and better when you're just in her presence. So, so I, I can appreciate the value of having worked for her, I'm sure, for many years. The other thing I love is the investing in yourself and, and getting a coach, because I think sometimes um, the further along you get in your career, you're placed mm -hmm. in a position to do something, you're either afraid to reach out and ask for help. There's an assumption by others that you know all, you're comfortable in the space, and and I think as leaders, it's important for us to A, be, be super comfortable with a little vulnerability to say, mm -hmm. hey, I'm, I'm in this role, but it doesn't mean I know everything and I may need some support and guidance. And it's important as a leader to remember when people step into a new role, that no matter how wonderful they were the step before, that greatness uh, you know, in the future is dependent upon the support and the development in whatever the newness is for them. So I applaud you for doing that. I think that's incredible. And I think it's great advice for anybody that's listening that's taken another step or thinking about it. Um, if you wanna do it on your own, do it. If you wanna say, hey, who, who can help me? That's incredible too, because that's how we all grow. I love that because I would also say like, seek people out. You know, I know so often I hear I hear people people will ask me, you know, about, you know, how did I, you know, get to know Kate or how did I make this stuff happen and or, or how do I how did you find a mentor in your career? How did you do that? And you know, I really I would encourage people to 
take ownership of that, seek people out, build relationships. Don't wait for a mentor program or don't wait for somebody to kind of, you know, push you forward. If that's something that's important to you, seek people out. Pe more people than you think are willing to lend a hand and share their time and talent with you. So, you know, be proactive. Don't be don't wait to be reactive would be the other piece I would share with that. 100%. And I think being um, open to informal mentorship, just the just the conversation over coffee that you can have that will that you can glean some information from and be willing to share. And, you know, I think that's a great, a, some great advice. So one of the things, um, or, or I should say, one of the biggest things we're focusing on today is around business planning and setting yourself up for success for the future. And I know that it's that time of year. Right, we're all leaning in, whether whether it's you for the company and working with managers on offices, or hopefully our agents uh, are either in the process or after today will be of realizing the importance of business planning and setting up those goals for the prior for the next year. And you know, we all have different feelings on um, how we go about that. So today's session is going to be great. It's going to be focused on that. Before I turn it over to you and who everybody's here to listen to, which is you and everyone else. When you were an agent, were you the um, create a plan, create a goal, put it down, measure, or uh, did that evolve for you? It definitely evolved. So when in my first year or two, I was too nervous to put a plan down or like put anything, you know, concrete for me. Um, so, uh, so it definitely evolved. Um, and then it, and it, but it, but evo it, it, it evolved. I learned um, from a from a previous mentor in my life that if it's worth doing, it's worth tracking. Um, and that uh, I had to dust that off when I came into the real estate business. Um, so for my first couple of years, I I wasn't great at that. It evolved and it has stayed with me to today. So I definitely boil things down um, and track and come up with a plan. So absolutely, it evolved. Excellent. And, and that shows growth. And, and that's super important too, right? We, we can all evolve as we go. So with that, I'm going to bow out for about the next whatever, while you and uh, the amazing agents that we've had assembled today talk a little bit about this year and next and how we set ourselves up for the best year yet. Thank you, Pauline. I'll be awesome. back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So awesome. So welcome, Wendy, Elena, and Laura. Thank you so much for joining us on this uh, great session of What Moves Her. Uh, as you know, the topic is 20 uh, business planning, making next year your best year yet. Um, but I'd love to introduce you to our audience. So I'm just going to uh, I'll start with you, Wendy, if you just want to tell us how long have you been in the real estate business and what markets do you serve? Hey, everybody. My name is Wendy Dickinson. I have been in real estate for about 18 years and I am in the greater Charlotte area. So North Carolina or North Carolina in the top part of South Carolina. Great. Thank you. Laura, how about you? I have been in business for 41 years. And my marketplace is typically west of Boston, specializing in the Concord and Carlisle area. Excellent. Thank you for joining us, Laura. And how about Elena? Welcome. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Elena Price, and I work out of the Westwood Mass office, but uh, generally focus on areas just um, west of uh, Boston, maybe 10 miles out. 10 to 15 miles out. Great. Thank you. So to kick it off, the question I'm going to kick it off with is, um, are you approaching this year or 2021 differently than maybe you have in past years? And how so? Wendy, do you want to share a little bit about that? Sure. So we, like everybody else, kind of started off this year not understanding what kind of craziness was going to go on. And we actually had a team event 
um, celebrating 2019 and our team is in Barbados. And that's when all of this craziness started going on and we started feeling the effects of it a little bit. And at any rate, um, as other people were watching other agents kind of shelter and not everybody was so unsure and I was kind of in a nice position to keep going based off of our market and how our closures were going and stuff. And so ultimately the snowball effect started going and we got so busy that we honestly, we didn't have a chance to kind of worry about all, everything that was going on around us. And, you know, some great advice from you years ago was to kind of put your blinders on and just move forward and see what you can do. So we have, I would say probably different this year than anyone else, any other year I had dug in and really just focused on working. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Elena, how about you? Did you do anything differently this year for, or thinking differently for 2021? Well, the, this year started off as it usually does and we were starting to get busy and all and then everything changed obviously we had to reevaluate how we did our business how we approached um different aspects of the business and even right down to listing appointments and showings but i do agree with wendy we were just so busy that you didn't have time to not move ahead you had to just figure it out and see what worked. And a lot of people backed out of just participating in selling real estate or being involved. And I, um, I, I did just the opposite. So it was, it's been in a very, very, very busy year, but a, a good year, but obviously not <laughs> in terms of real estate. You know what I'm trying sure. to say. I do. Thanks, Elena. I'll switch gears for a second and I'll turn it over to Laura. And I'm gonna ask Laura, how do you prepare for each year in real estate? How do you approach the, the your upcoming year? Um, okay, so how I approach my year is starting around November, I start really thinking about the year that I've just almost completed. And I take an inventory and what I do is I say, okay, how many transactions did I um, accomplish or do I expect to accomplish by the end of the year? And then I take sort of a forensic approach where I analyze where did they come from? Were they from my sphere of influence? Were they from some marketing? Were they from the internet? Were they from signs? Were they from referrals? And I really focus on what worked and what didn't work. And then what I do is I think about the year ahead and I think, okay, what are my plans? And how many, how many weeks do I want to work this upcoming year. And typically I only work 44 weeks a year. I like to take eight weeks off. So what do I need to accomplish in those 44 weeks? And then I ask myself, number one, what do I need? Because there's things that I need. I need to be able to pay my health insurance. I need to pay my mortgage. I need to pay, you know, my utilities, all the things everybody needs to pay. And how much do I need for that? And then I need to analyze what do I want? Is there something really special that I'm hoping to be able to obtain? Or is there a vacation I want to take? And I sort of take it from an income approach and then I move backwards. So if I need X amount of money, I look at how much I, my average commission is, say my average commission is, I don't know, let's say $5,000 and I want to make $100,000, then I need to budget for 20 transactions. And how do I get those 20 transactions? Well, history tends to repeat itself. So if I, if I nurtured my relationships, if I really touched my sphere of influence, how am I going to continue to do that? If my, um, online marketing didn't work, I, I, I discard that, but I really, um, analyze each transaction and, um, project from the future based on the past and based on what my hopes and needs and wants are for the future. That's great. And such practical, tactical advice, Laura. That's awesome. Thank you. Wendy, I'm going to turn it to, back to you for a second and ask you, what is your perspective on goal setting? Do you tell others your goals? Do you 
keep them quietly inside and chip away at them and why? And then Elena, I'm going to ask you the same question after Wendy. I, this is for me personally, and I know everybody's got different ways that they, you know, do this, but for me, the louder, the better. Like we've got in our office, we have a chart, like a, you know, like a, um, a washboard chart that we, you know, X out, like as we get, it's almost like, you know, a, trying to um, win at the fair. Like we just keep marking it off as we go up. Um, we also have a weekly for our team on Friday afternoon, everybody's goals that they made for the year, how close they are to those goals, how many transactions close, pending all that stuff. So it's very trackable for myself, my team, um, and our leadership team here too. Because I, I, the more people that know, I think the more successful you are. That's, That's what works awesome. for us anyway. I love that. The loud. I love that. That's great. How about you, Elena? I set goals every year. I like Laura start getting into that towards the late October to November. I write everything down. I'm very visual. I post things everywhere. Um, I work off of whiteboards in my own office and just try to really, really think about what it is I want to achieve both, both on a personal and professional level. And I try to hold myself accountable. The, I share my goals with my family or with, you know, some of the people I work with. But um, I try to be busy enough that I don't have time to really share too much. I just want to keep trudging along and, and uh, pay attention to what I need to do to get to the next goal. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so let me go back to Laura for a second. Um, I know that Laura and Wendy have teams. So Laura, I'm going to ask you, um, how do you help your team achieve their goals? How does having a team impact your goal setting and your approach to any year? All right. So my team is um, very self-motivated. However, I always try to understand what's their why. Why are they working so hard? Because they do work hard. And during the year, I like to remind them of what they shared with me. Um, somebody's goal was they wanted to buy a house and that was really important to her. So, you know, we, I, would, I would say things like, you know, have you been looking at houses? How are you doing? Another person wants to bring their um, grandson to, Disney World and, you know, you're closer to that, you're seeing Mickey or whatever. Um, but really understanding what, what fuels their desire, reminding them, checking up, holding them accountable. We do have a reverse thermometer in our office where every time somebody completes a transaction, they mark it off and we get really excited and say, oh, you're almost there, or you're going to make your goal or, or, or whatever, but very goal oriented team with accountability and understanding of what, what's behind the goal. That's excellent. Thank you, Laura. How about you, Wendy? For as from the team standpoint, the team standpoint, correct. So we do, we have every year we have um, individual goals. And then our individual goals add up, obviously, to our team goal that we're trying to hit that year. And I think, um, to Laura's point, everybody's reason or amount of time that they want to put into this business is different. So I think it's really important to respect um, what people are trying to get out of it. So, you know, some people are very money motivated. Some people are just, you know, want to help people or whatever it is. And so that's a really important piece. I think if you're going to run a successful team with happy agents, it's it's really important to know why they're there and what's going to motivate them and where their goals are, because they're different for everybody. That's great. Thank you. So you're all incredibly successful and we know everybody knows that success doesn't happen by chance. So Elena, I'm curious, you know, what are the things that you've done in your career to ensure your success? Some of the key elements that you maybe add into your business plan to ensure your your continued success. Well, you have to um, absolutely love what you do. 
and that's important mm -hmm. and you have to have really good support and I think that's also very important and um, I feel as though listening, learning, continuing to grow, um, trying to find some excitement in this. I mean, it does get pretty mundane to work seven days a week, some days 12, 14 hours. So it's mentally just preparing yourself for the next day and, and um, really trying to stay focused on your goals, on what you want to achieve, on what, why you're doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Great. How about you, Laura? Um, what are some of the key things that you've done in your career to be successful? One of the things that I've done successful was I married well. Um, and I mean that very sincerely. I have a husband who was very supportive of me, who was um, very encouraging when I had to shift plans or change plans or whatever. So I think that that's, that I, I always say I have the home court advantage because I, mm. I had a lot of support from my family. Um, also, yeah. I work in a very small community. And one thing that I, I believe that has, has helped me maintain my success is that I'm incredibly confidential. And, um, you know, I don't share stories of people's lives with anybody. And I think that has helped me. I also think I've been successful because I completely continue to really be grateful for a career that I love. And I think that my enthusiasm for helping people and my enthusiasm for my career is um, transparent. And I think people want to work with people who are um, positive and upbeat and committed. And I think those are the traits that I have. That's awesome. I love the line home field advantage. Uh, I think that's so great. Uh, we know that uh, having all the support that we can get in this uh, this business that can be 12 to 14 hours a day, seven days a week, all the support counts. So that's lovely. Um, how about you, Wendy? Any I, things you know, you've done in your career to be successful? I think probably the best thing that I've done is surround myself with people who are awesome, like-minded, um, want to work. Uh, I got some great, you know, when you're early, early on, I learned that, you know, if you're surrounding yourself with people that have a problem to every solution, you're going to drop with them instead of, you know, hanging out with people who are, can do, you know, whatever, you got to go all in on it. Um, I think Elena made a great point too. Like you have to love this job. Like you're never, I don't think you could be successful in this if you don't really love what you're doing and you have to love it in a way that it's not just a financial windfall for you, but you have to love helping people. You have to get excited about, you know, the first time home buyers, the people who are selling a house and are making a huge equity position on it. Like those are the things that are like awesome. And I think it's really important to care about the people that you're working with. Um, Laura touched on, she works in a small market. We have a huge geographic market that we cover, but ultimately, you know, your reputation is everything with other agents, with your clients. Um, I've had a lot of success with my referrals. And I think that's because my clients understand that they're without question, my priority. Um, you have to really remain motivated too. Like, um, to what Elena pointed out, you know, it's hard sometimes working seven days a week, 14 hours a day, but if you love what you're doing and you'll do, you know, it's okay. You'll, it'll work out and just stay committed to the process. Wendy, I'm going to put you on the spot and just ask you, you know, you always <laughs> used to tell me one thing that you would attribute to your success or one piece of advice that you would give, uh, another agent to be successful in real estate. Do you know what that is? Answer your phone. I have, this is anybody who's ever asked me ever what the biggest key to success is in this industry. It's answer your phone. And I think you'll, you can meet a lot of people along the way who've got a million different schemes and ways to go about our business. And ultimately what it boils down to, we are here to buy and sell real estate. That's it. That's all, that's all we're supposed to be doing. We're problem solvers, we're therapists, we're this, but it's just trying to get, keep the process moving. But I, I can't, 
if I could give one piece of advice to any agent in this business, it's answer your phone. And I don't care if you've been in the business for 50 years or two days, it's, it's literally the most important piece of the puzzle. That's awesome. Thank you, Wendy. So look, this business is, uh, you know, this business has um, somebody. Somebody used the term roller coaster. I think Sue started uh, our this session with that phrase "roller coaster," um, speaking about the 2020 year. But um, let's face it, real, real estate has its ups and downs, and you know, some days are tougher than others. So when you have a particularly hard day, or you have a disappointment appointment in real estate, you know, in uh, in a transaction or in a situation, how do you get back on track? Elena, I'll serve that up to you first. But if, you know, if things, if you have some things fall through, or it's looking like maybe you're not going to end up with a month or a quarter that you perhaps want, how do you, how do you, uh, how do you right the ship and get back on track? You just focus on, you just make new goals, figure that wasn't you know, what was meant to be and that something better is around the corner. I am always, always trying to be and remain positive. Um, it's on for, I mean, we deal with it. I'm dealing with it literally in right this minute with two deals that in, in so close to closing, it's like, whatever. You just pick up and you move on. Something better is coming your way. So um, you can't let it upset you or bring you down or it's just a part of doing business. So the good and the bad is a part of doing business. That's excellent. I always Thank say you, you can't, oh, oh no, I was just saying you can't, do the volume that you do without disappointment. It's going to come. That's excellent. Thank you. How about you, Laura? How do you uh, stay on track or what advice would you to give to somebody who maybe was missing their target? I track my fall throughs and I think it's important to track them because then you can expect them. And I always expect things not to work out perfectly. Um, though I aim for them, um, I'm not surprised when something falls apart because um, my past has shown me that things fall apart and then you get something and something happens good in maybe the same day or the same week. Um, but I really feel being able to bounce back is important. I'm very competitive. I hate to lose a listing. I hate to have a deal fall through, but that sort of gives me the impetus to make more calls. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it up, you know, to just jump back on the horse and try a little bit better. I also say that, you know, what's the worst thing that happens? We're not, we're not working in an emergency room. We're not doctors. We're not dealing with life and death. So if the worst thing that happens is something doesn't come to fruition that we thought or hoped ha was going to happen, then it's not so bad. It can happen again. That's great. Wendy, anything to add? Same. I think Laura just made a great point when she said, you know, if you if you're in a situation that feels like it's erupting and it's just going out, it's spiraling. The way that at least I handle it is after I'm drinking, but. I, uh, if you imagine the worst case scenario of the situation and realize that that worst case scenario is livable and how you would react to those situations, then it really, it's an easy way to bring yourself back on track and kind of settle down into it and realize that um, there's a way out. There's a positive. It's going to end the way it's supposed to. And as long as you do everything in your power to help your clients and keep them focused on their end goal, then it's, it all happens the way it's supposed to. So before we get to the what moves you question and the questions from the audience, um, I'm just curious, um, in 2020, you know, have you been able to stay on track um, with your goals? And, you know, how did you do anything um, special? Elena, were you, have you stayed on track? I have, um, certainly in a new way or a different way, but um, doing my best to just 
reread my goals, stay focused, and try to um, do the best job that I can for my clients. And hopefully good things will come from that. So yes, I'm, I, I feel like I'm on track and I'm hoping to have an even better year next year. Awesome. Laura, we had a conversation very early on this year and you told me though, you told me what your approach was going to be. Do you want to, sh when we chatted right when the pandemic first came? So um, I was asked by many people if I was going to readjust my goal during the pandemic. And I said, no, I'm not going to readjust my goal. I'm going to readjust my vacations. And um, so I changed that. I decided that I was going to, because there were so many days that we weren't sure how do we work? Well, how, you know, what do we do? People will not let you in their houses that I readjusted my vacations. And um, this year, the time that I took off was more COVID care. And then um, I also decided that I was going to, when I saw that the market was robust and healthy, that I was going to ride that wave. And I made a commitment that I was going to list, list, and more list. That really my focus was 100% on listing because it seemed like the only ones that were winning in this market were the listing brokers and the sellers. And I wanted to win. I wanted my goal to be achieved. And um, I believe I'm on track and my hope is to exceed my goals. And just, I didn't well, want to lose my I goals. remember when we had that conversation and I was inspired because I thought, you know what? I've, I learned from Kate Rossi that listings are, listings are what drives this business. And I hung up that phone with you and I thought that is, uh, that Laura is 100% right. And um, so kudos to you, kudos to all of you ladies. There's no surprise that you um, have all been so successful, not only in 2020, um, but throughout all of your careers. And I can't wait to watch what you all do next. Thank you for joining me today. I'm gonna turn it back to Sue so we can get some Q&A from the audience and wrap and, um, and then hear what moves you. Back to you, Sue. Excellent, fabulous panel ladies. Lots of love in the comments coming in for all of you and your amazing advice and uh, you know the power panel of superstar women in the industry. So thank you so much. I am gonna get to the question of what moves you, but you know, some things that just jumped out at me that I wanted to highlight that, you know, I like am sort of geeking out over because I love them so much. Laura, tracking your fall throughs, right? Because it's going to happen. So, you know, you touch so much on the importance of data and tracking things and keeping that compelling scorecard, as I call it. It is so important. It is going to happen. It's part of the business. Know it, embrace it, understand the impact to you so you can plan for it. I think that is amazing. Elena, reread your goals, stay focused. You know, once you write something down, a strategy or a goal or a plan doesn't go in the desk, right? You have to you have to come back to it. You have to revisit it to ensure you're remaining focused. And Wendy, um, you know, I call it catastrophizing, right? Don't catastrophize. When something goes wrong, take a minute, take a cocktail, whatever it may be for you, take a cup of coffee, take a run. It's okay, right? It is not the end of the world. Kind of what's the worst thing that's going to happen? You're good at what you do. Things happen. Don't let it spiral and consume you and keep moving forward. I think just little snippets of tremendous advice across the board. Pauline, you're a rock star. I, I have a couple specific questions people in the audience want to know about you. But let's start with what moves you? So what moves me? So I, I gave a little bit of a, of a sneak peek. I think I'm a little bit of an adrenaline junkie, an adventure junkie a bit. Um, I'm also a gamer. So whether that was sports or backyard badminton or a killer Scrabble tournament trying to beat my mom or my sisters, um, that um, being my best winning, if you will, building, you know, uh, that that moves me, that excites me, putting, getting myself out of my comfort zone and then accomplishing something uh, really moves me. So, you know, I can 
think back with my sisters, you know, I used to have to cheat at Scrabble to win, so I had to get better. Um, you know, when we played badminton and I wouldn't win, I would practice and practice to get better. So what moves me really is, um, you know, is an adventure and really um, being my best. That's awesome. Laura, how about you? What when moves I was you? In um, when I was in high school, I was on a um, crisis hotline. I trained to be uh, a crisis hotline person, which, which probably isn't a great person to have a high school student. But for, from a very early um, age, I realized that people were in relationships. People made choices because they were dependent on other people. And I thought, yeah, mm. I'm, I'm never going to be that person. I'm going to be self, self-reliant and I'm going to be dependent. And then what happens was... Um, got married and I had a couple of kids and I thought, I don't want my kids ever to go to work and hate what they do. I want them to be passionate about what they do because I feel passionate. And I wanted to be that mom. I wanted to be that role model that showed that you can um, wake up and be happy to go to work and that you could could enjoy it. And I also am very moved by um, helping people. It, it, when I When I go to somebody's house, I believe with 100% confidence that nobody will take better care of them than I will. Mm -hmm. And I really sincerely believe that. And that's the message that I want um, them to, to, to hear, to feel, and to, to express in their reviews of me that I cared about them, that I tried really, really hard. So that's what moves me. That's fantastic. I love that. I, I love it. And I can sense it in you even through the screen, as I'm sure everyone else can as well. Wendy, what moves you besides amazing meetings in the Bahamas or Barbados, wherever you were when this all started? I, you know, honestly, I wish I had like a great answer for that, but I feel like it's kind of a, a rolling target and it depends on the day, the month. Um, similar to Pauline, I am very competitive. Um, and so for me, it's, you know, it's nice to make goals, break them, you know, s s go do better than them. It's nice to see people around me doing the same thing. So, um, you know, part of it is, you know, a work, but a happy life. Um, and to touch on what Laura said, I'm sure all of us at some point in time have had a really, really crummy job that killed you and sucked the life out of you. And so when you get into doing something like this, that's amazing and you touch people in like amazing ways and change their lives, it's like, it's a cool, cool feeling. So it's almost like, I said like, if you've got a first time home buyer and they're at the table and they're just giddy and they're so excited, I mean, that's like a natural high that you get that's like, you did this for them. You helped them make a good decision. And in five years, they're gonna have $100,000 to put down on something else. like. That's a really, really great motivator to stay, you know, happy and enjoying what you're doing. That's awesome. I love that. Elena? I kind of feel the same way um, that all of these women do. Uh, it, what moves me, my, my obviously setting a good example for my two boys and showing them what hard work and being um, ethical and, and just a really good person and caring and, and being working as hard as you can so that you're doing a good job as often as you can, as much as you can, doing your best. That's really what moves me. But I agree with Wendy that there are times when you are you see uh, clients so appreciative and so happy and you remember why you got into the business to begin with. It's a wonderful feeling. It really is. It's great. And so, and like Pauline and Laura, just, you know, caring about people and being competitive, you have to have a competitive spirit to be successful in this job. You really do. So all of those, I agree. everything. Yeah, that's fantastic. So I'm going to get to thank you all so much for sharing that and that sort of personal insight uh, beyond the business side. But Couple questions are coming in from the audience and I thought I'd jump right in to them. Um, let me send this one to Wendy. Uh, and then I'll, if anybody wants to sort of tag on any common pitfalls that an inexperienced agent can avoid in their day to day business. Yes. <laughs> I think when you're, when you're brand new in the business, I think it's really easy to get sidetracked with 
working and the working that you're doing is not an income producing activity. So for example, watching HGTV all day to get the newest styles and things that are coming out, not working. <laughs> um, so again, it's it, if you can, if I was a brand new agent and I actually did this as a brand new agent, I found somebody who I felt like I a got along with, had a similar style to me, and actually he and I are um, teammates and have been now for basically 18 years. Um, just surround yourself by people who are doing awesome things that you want to do yourself and don't get caught up in I, I keep using this working in air quotes thing because it's so easy to find stuff that you're doing, but if it is not an income producing activity, you are not working. That'd be my 100%. best advice. No, I think it's wonderful advice. Elena, Laura, Pauline, anyone want to uh, jump in? Laura? Uh, one bit of advice that I think is often under um, estimated or looked over is that I think it's really important the behavior a new agent has with their fellow uh, brokers and agents, not only in your office, but in other offices, um, really try to develop good relationships with those people, be honest, be helpful, be available, um, treat them with the utmost respect because we all need each other. And um, I always say that the um, audience changes, but the cast remains the same. So so treat each other well, treat, treat the other brokers really well try to uh, help agents who are new to the business to not focus on the money, the commission, but to focus on the client and the transaction and to work for them because all of that comes naturally if you're doing a good job. So focus on the task at hand, not how much you're going to get paid and what, you know, it's, it's because a lot of times you can tell that in a new agent they're not focusing on the actual job at hand yeah focus and commitment to those activities it is you know it's it's truly your entrepreneurs and if you're not focused on things that are making you money you're probably losing money and so that's you know you're leaving something on the table um, and you're you're not focused Pauline there's a comment in here so I'm curious uh, it says thanks Pauline and panelists for a great session very inspiring I remember your spinning plates plan, Pauline, when I'm goal setting. Do you remember the spinning plates plan? And what is that? Of course. <laughs> of course. So the beautiful thing about, so thank you for the comment and thank you for whoever wrote that. And thank you for remembering that. It's always, it's always great to know that those sessions uh, are lasting. So look, I think one of my favorite things about real estate is that you really only need to do like a handful of things really well for uh, business generating activities. And let's face it, in our industry, in our business, there's probably upwards of 20 or 30 business producing activities that you can engage in. You know, so the obvious ones are open house, uh, social media, online leads, expired listings for sale by owners, geographic farming, what, you know, there's a countless number of them. And the spinning plate theory is to actually identify. Uh, I encourage new uh, people to start with three, uh, but a well-balanced uh, seasoned agent should really be kind of focused on their five spinning plates, the things that they do regularly uh, to make, you know, to build and maintain their business. So that's the spinning plates. I wish I could take credit for having uh, created it, but I stole it from somebody. I think it was like a Peter Sobeck that I stole it from, yeah. but I... I loved the concept of it, and I loved the the cre the flexibility that each person can choose the ones that are most meaningful to them. That's great. It is such a personalized thing. What works for each individual, and I think that's part of what has made everybody on this call successful is the ability to do so authentically in the way that works for you. I think we have very different approaches represented on this call as we do in every aspect of our business and focusing on different things for, you know, Wendy may not work for Laura, but they're all focused on their business 
and their clients and getting it done. And I think that's tremendous. And, and I think it is um, certainly important to, to, to streamline the number of plates, especially for newer agents, right? We try and sometimes boil the ocean and we want to make sure it's manageable and something we can actually, you know, be successful in and not kind of drown under the weight of trying to do all and be all, right? Find something that works. So one last question. Oh my gosh, we're so running out of time. I feel like this group could stay here forever. I mean, you guys probably have to go sell houses, but I think this would be an amazing way to spend the entire day. What, um, there is a question here as it relates to your goal setting. So I'm going to go down um, each of you and, and two, two little aspects quickly. One, how do you get back on track if you're not meeting your goals? And is there some sort of volume versus value that goes into your goal setting? It's a little interesting nuance there. Laura, I'm going to start with you. Uh, you did state something that you know made me write down. Knowing is important. You got to know your goals to know if you're not meeting your goals. But um, how do you get back on track? And is there a volume versus value or something else that goes into your goal setting? Yes. Um, so I, I track my goals. Every week I have an accountability partner and we are a group of people who, who hold each other accountable. And we say, how many offers did you get this week? How many listings did you get? How many conversations did you get? Um, how many, um, how many, buyer leads, how many seller leads. And I can tell if I'm off my, my percent by a percentage wise numbers don't, don't lie. So I'm always weekly tracking my goals. Also, another thing is, um, I, I share my goals and some of my goals have to do with my family. So if I have a goal that, um, when my son was young, he really loved uh, home alone. And so one of the goals for him, for me, for him was that I was going to take him and we were going to stay at the plaza in New York and do everything that the Home Alone kid did. And so I got him engaged. So if you get people that love you and support you engaged in your goals, they're not mad when you're not working, when you're working one night or you're trying extra hard because everybody wants to know what's in it for them. So I, I engaged my, my um, family and my people that I included my goals in those um, decisions. That's great. Elena, how about you? Um, when I need to get back on track, I just, believe it or not, go back to the very, very basics of this business when I first started and I start doing th just as simple as, believe it or not, maybe cold calling or, or just uh, touching base with clients I haven't spoken to in a long time. I go back to basics of just spending a lot of time in, it brings a new energy, it, it brings new business, and that helps you achieve your goal for the next step. That's great, back to the basics, so important, the, the fundamentals, as Pauline mentioned, that, that keep us moving forward. How about you, Wendy? I mean, same thing. Or, yeah. No, go ahead. It actually happened to me a few years ago. I was traveling back and forth to the West Coast for some um, family stuff. And, you know, as our business goes, when you're having momentum, it's very easy to keep the momentum. As soon as you lose momentum, it's like, you know, the, everything shifts. And um, I, for me, at least, and like this is my own personal experience, I went back to, you know, your friends and your family know you're successful. They know you're doing great. They're excited. And I went back to past clients that I felt comfortable doing it with, friends and family saying, hey, I need help. I need to get back, you know, I, I'm trying to get my goals and my business plan together right now. What can you do? And I, it was almost instantaneous. So I can't, and you can, all you have to do is just ask for help, right? Tell people what you need. And that goes for your friends, your family, your coworkers, um, your management team, whoever it is. Just reach out and say, hey, I'm trying to do this. Who do you have? So I think to what Elena's point is, it's, it's very much back to basics. That is awesome. And again, don't be afraid to ask for help. This is uh, you know, a, a business that was, we're, we, we live in our community, we serve our communities, but we are a community. And there are always resources that are willing to help, whether it be a fellow agent or a team member, a manager, you know, your manager in your office, you know, me, Pauline, there's always somebody that you can reach out to that's willing to help. And so just like you ladies have done today to a broad group of people in our industry, you have helped and you have helped give great advice to 
leaders in our industry, people starting out, et cetera, that can help them set up 2021 for the best year yet. So thank you all so much for your time, your commitment to grow, to being the best and to helping lift others up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Wow, what a session. And I had to put my headphones on. I don't know if it helped. My dog was barking. Um, but, you know, look, with Grace, we work from home these days, right? So a couple things. One, thank you to that amazing panel. Again, I hope you all learned something. Um, and I hope you have some tangible uh, things you can take forward and begin thinking about as you look to planning 2020. We are hosting our Education Expo on November 5th, which will be focused on four disciplines of execution and business planning. And anybody who knows me at all knows that I'm a huge believer and follower in that. We will have Chris McChesney from uh, the book, The Four Disciplines of Execution, all about goal setting, setting those measures, those lead metrics that we heard uh, the, the women speak so much about today. I'm really excited about that session. I am equally excited for the final What Moves Her session of 2020. So on Wednesday, November 18th at 2 p.m., we will be focused on seizing new opportunities. What a great way to wrap the year as we head into what I hope will be the best year yet, 2021. Thank you all. Have a great afternoon. Thanks for joining us.